Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about reflections over a line. If you need a video on reflections over on the coordinate plane, I have a different video for that. So this is just simply taking an image, looking at a line and reflecting it over. So here's the process that we need. You're definitely gonna need a ruler or a protractor. If you have both, that's excellent. You need some kind of straight edge for sure and some way to know for a fact that you're working with a perpendicular angle. So it says here, if I wanted to reflect uh, this rectangle ABCD, what I have to do is I have to create a perpendicular line from each vertex of the figure to the reflection line. So basically what I need to do is I need to take a ruler and connect point A to my reflection line, but it's gotta be a line that is a perpendicular line. So you may wanna grab, again, a protractor or if you have a corner, that's always gonna be a 90 degree angle. But basically what we wanna do is we wanna be able to create a line and extend it um, so that we end up getting a line that is perpendicular to A, and then the segment, the measure from point A to that line is copied over onto the other side, okay? And that is how we reflect any point over a line. We create a perpendicular line from that point crossing through the line that we want it to reflect at a 90 degree angle. The measure of this segment is then copied over onto the other side. So if you had a ruler, you would simply measure how long that is and then copy that length over and that is where point A prime would be. Then you would need to do that with each point on your figure. So then you would take your ruler or your protractor uh, create a perpendicular line from this point through the line, going uh, crossing through that line, measure this length from B to the line, and then copy that exact length onto the other side, and that's where B prime would be. Same with C. So I'm going to take this point. I'm going to construct a perpendicular line. I'm going to measure the length from C to this line and basic, basically copy that same distance, and that's where C prime is, and then do the same with D prime. And then once I have my four points of my four primes, I can connect them, and that's what the reflection would look like. So these are all perpendicular lines. The distance from the line to the point is the same as the distance from the line to my prime point on each one. We're going to take a look at just some more examples of this same process. So if I wanted to take triangle EFG and reflect it over this line, I'm going to create a perpendicular line from E that intersects my reflection line. And then I'm going to make sure that that length here from E to the reflection line is duplicated onto the other side. So there's E prime. Same thing with F. I'm going to construct a perpendicular line. This distance is then copied onto the other side to get F prime. And then the same with G prime, which ends up being really short. And I'm going to connect my E prime, F prime, and G prime. Now you're only going to be as accurate as you are with your ruler. So the 90 degree angle obviously is a big deal. And then also the measure. So if something, you know, you're measuring in centimeters, sometimes might be easier than inches because you're working with tenths and those are really easy to count. Um, whatever uh, tool you're using, you know, make sure it's as accurate as possible. Same thing here for this trapezoid. So I'm measuring the distance from H perpendicular, this distance from the line to get H prime, I another perpendicular line to get I prime, J, and then K. And I think you would get the point and visually you can see that th these truly are perfect reflections. Um, and again, they're only as good as accurate of your, as accurate your measures are and it takes a little time of course to get used to that but it should be generally pretty good. Now this third example notice the figure actually crosses over the reflection line already so what's going to be interesting here is that the reflection is actually going to be part of an overlap. So if I reflect L over this reflection line it's actually inside of the original figure that's where L prime would be but now when I go to reflect M N O P Notice those are all going to go on the other side of the reflection line. So M prime, N prime, O prime, and P prime. And when I connect them and I make that figure, notice it is definitely the blue figure is now reflected over the line to get the red, but there is a cool little overlap section. The last thing I just need to show you is when you take a figure and you reflect it more than once. So if I took QRST and I reflected over the first line, 
So, you know, following the same procedures, create, construct my uh, perpendicular lines of the same measure and create my new image. And then I would take this image and now reflect this image of Q prime, R prime, S prime, T prime over the second line. So now I'm constructing a new perpendicular line where this measure is equal to this measure. I'm getting Q double prime, R double prime, S double prime, and then T double prime. And now I have my double prime figure. And now for the last one, I'm gonna take that figure and reflect it over the third line. So now again, I'm taking Q double prime, I'm constructing a perpendicular, I'm measuring the distance from Q double prime to my line and doubling that measure to go out to here for Q triple prime, I'm creating a perpendicular from R double prime to my reflection line, measuring that distance and duplicating it on the other side to get R triple prime. Same with S triple prime and T triple prime. And that's it. That's how you reflect any figure over a line. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.